Todd. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, got some people ah, that want to see you. We're ready. Good. Got a rarity for you. Pennant fever. Oh yes, you've seen them, but you haven't seen one like this. Look at the cabinet. Notice anything unusual? Yes. This is one of the prototypes of which, from what I'm gathering, there's only three or four of them out there. Sure, this isn't a TNT repaint? <laughs> uh, yeah, we put all down to the bare wood and started over. <laughs> Actually, here's an interesting story. I sold this to a customer in 1988. I just traded it in. So it's been in their house all this time. Stephen had to only do a little touch-up. I mean, it still has the little registered sticker on here, too. It's actually a sticker stuck on the cabinet. It's in great shape. We did change the green tea molding, or I guess just up front. But what makes this so neat is that supposedly so few were made. And the reason we know it's probably a real prototype is Williams had a distributor in Philadelphia, Eastern Music. And I purchased this at some point used from Eastern Music. They used to get every prototype that any of the companies produced. They'd get one, two, three, or four of them. Uh, Stan Harris got a lot of the Gottlieb prototypes here in Philadelphia. Philadelphia was a big city for distributing of these arcade games. So this is a, uh, a 1984 game, and the cabinet that most people see is white with green and yellow side art. Uh, so here's a treat to see something like that. As a matter of fact, we did take some pictures of it before we started working on it, actually while Tony's working on it. Let's cut over to them now. Part of the overhaul is scrubbing the play field. It was pretty dirty, huh? Pretty bad. So you've Let's taken the again. parts off the yep. field here to get this up. Yeah, you can see where I haven't done it here and then compare that to where I just did on, and on this side. Yeah, boy, what a difference, huh? That was pretty neat. Yes, the games come up really nice once you sh we shine them up and get them all back to normal. And we think in, uh, in somebody's home now, this will probably stay this way for many years. We have changed all of the lighting on the playfield to LED, and we have a new fluorescent light up front that lights the front. Slugfest uses incandescent light bulbs where Williams put a fluorescent one in. We also put all LEDs up here except for the pennant uh, shots here, where the pennant flags come up. Now, I want to show you something that Chris uncovered, and this could save you a lot of grief. I wanted to show you the logic board. This is the System 10, 10 8 board, the System 8. It was only used in this one game, and also was used in gridiron. Now, Gridiron, we did it's about two months ago. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you the link to that. Right? No, no, you know what? I'm not going to show it to you now because then you'll click away. I'll give you the link at the end of the video. Anyway, the uh, circuit board here combines everything on one board, all the sound and the speech, all on one board. Now, the connectors are all very similar, but I want to show you something just so you're not being driven nuts. There's one unused connector here. This was for a proposed optic switch system. So this plug is not used, but if you plug this one in there, and it actually will go in because the, if you don't have a knockout, this does not have a knockout. If you plug this in here, the switches will work, but they won't work right, and it's going to drive you nuts. So just so you know, this plug is unused on this board. Okay, now the other thing you should know is that if you have this game into a test, like so, switch test, I should say. No switches are present. So you know how the Williams tests work, where if you have a button down or a switch stuck, come up. If this plug is unplugged, it's going to constantly read switch 28. And at first, since there's nothing in the manual about it, at first we thought there was a problem with the board. So we took the board out, we checked for shorts, we changed this PIA, which happened to be soldered directly in, and now it's in a socket. Still couldn't figure it out. But it turned out to be that there is a normally closed switch on the play field. So if that plug is unplugged, it comes up as though it's an error with the board. Okay, well, 
film it like this again. Here, wait a minute. So, it'll come up as though there's an actual error with the board, when in fact there's not. Anyway, let's go back into Game Over. We have it on free play, but I wanted you to hear the credit, uh, what happens. It has this nice, big, loud bell in there to ring when it goes off. Pretty, hot, pretty good, huh? Anyway, just like all their games, if you play one player, it doesn't matter which button you hit, you still knock the shots down. Now, originally Williams had clear, see, you can see, uh, buttons in here which we, we kept in there because the fluorescent light lets them glow a little bit and also helps the start, start button to glow. See? See there's no uh, light bulbs out there. Pretty good, huh? There we go. Now there's also speech in this game. So 1984 they did have speech and it was all on the one board. They didn't have any extra circuit boards. So they really packed a lot of stuff on that main logic board, didn't they? Anyway, uh, Look around at the sides. You showed pretty much how nice the sides are. Your standard silver door in the front. Williams used that right up until 1985. But the uh, serial number in the back, let me show you that. Part. Doesn't behoove, oh, I love using words like that, behoove an early production. It says 13646. I would think if this was a, a prototype, the number would be real low, but I don't know. I think that would even satisfy the most persnickety customers. The persnickety customer. Ah, uh, yes. That's it. Yeah, that's two words. I don't... I, I, I only want to give our, our viewers one new word per show. All right. Uh, did we cover everything, Frank? Yep. No. Well, you know what's coming up? Radical, later this week. Um, we're still in the process of restoring it. It's... It's pretty hideous right now. We haven't washed it or cleaned it. But look, here's another beauty, skate ball. And this is just getting finished play field wise. We just put all the new targets in, but we still have more work to do. So this is coming along beautifully. You're going to see that soon too. I think we covered everything, right? Thank you, Sarah. Carry on. That link, right? So here it is again. So you can watch the gridiron and do some comparisons. In the meantime, what, what's this mean? Point to the link. The link. I, well, the I link. did. I pointed over here. <sighs> you did that a half an hour ago. <sighs> There's your link. <laughs> Good day. How about having a private party here at TNT Amusements in our maze-like showrooms? Did you know that we have well over 60 games on free play? <laughs> Unlimited playtime in our Ayrton showroom. Try our antique light bulbs or look at our hologram collection. Plus, we're always changing games in the showroom, so there's always different games to play. And one of our party hostesses will run your entire party for you, making it real easy for you. I'd like you to meet my lovely wife, Pam. You know, folks, Pam and I were happy for almost 25 years. And then we met. Ha ha ha! 25 years, eh? It's not even my joke. It's Rodney Dangerfield. Hmm. But it's banana cream. Hmm? Look, your very own private party room. And we even show a classic cartoon while they're eating their food. We'll make your party a smash hit. Hope you enjoyed our show tonight, folks. And we have a little bit of time left over, so let's run some bloopers. And now, the fun part. Todd is, uh... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, everything I do stays here. Put it in the barn! <laughs> Put it in the barn! <laughs>
Put it in the barn! I can just see it now. The big cigar. Put it in the barn! It's hot impressive. I don't know. I don't have a... Here it is, the finger biting. Never worked for a place quite like this, and uh, I never thought I'd be here this long. Dean is very large. Worthless bum, no good, pretzel meat, son of a bitch. I owe 100000 on this, 200000 on that. I even know the pizza collar guys. Did you, see, did you see he was he was gonna walk by without stopping? <laughs> Dinner. <laughs> ah, living is good, isn't it, folks? That's all for now. Good night.